Robots as intentional agents, uh, that's the question. Um, do we treat robots as intentional agents? Let me start with an extract from a movie that most of you probably have seen, uh, an extract that is on YouTube, and I will hopefully manage to connect to YouTube and uh, show you uh, the light motive of our meeting today. So, the imitation game. Could machines ever think as human beings do? Most people say no. You're not most people. Well, the problem is you're asking a stupid question. Uh -huh. Of course, machines can't think as people do. The machine is different from a person. And so they think differently. The interesting question is, just because something uh, thinks differently from you, does that mean it's not thinking? Hmm. All right, I will uh, stop here and ask a very similar question that we ask in our, uh, in our lab. Namely, do the humans adopt the intentional stance towards robots? So I leave you with the question of, um, that is being asked in the, in the extract that I showed you. Um, does thinking differently, having different processes mean that it's not thinking? Well, as we know, as we have heard from Marek's talk, um, Alan Turing asked a different question, actually. He shifted the weight from the machine to the observer. And he said that, well, actually, it's a very difficult uh, question to ask whether um, an artificial thought is a thought. So why don't we ask a different question? Can a machine that pretends to be able to think like a human actually deceive or fool or make a human believe that it thinks? Is that enough then for um, attributing intelligence? And a very, very similar question is related to the, to the topic of, of my research, namely, whether do we, adopt, we adopt intentional stance towards robots. Intentional stance is, an, is a philosophical concept as well, introduced by Daniel Dennett. And the idea here is that when we um, explain and predict behaviors of others, other humans, we refer to um, mental states. So when I see someone grasp a glass of water, I explain that behavior as that they are um, probably believing, they believe that drinking water will ease their thirst. Belief is a mental state, right? So when we explain behaviors of other humans, we refer to mental states. When we explain behaviors of machines, such as, as, such as coffee machine, we um, typically refer to how the machine has been designed to behave. Not necessarily, hopefully, how it feels or thinks, because it's just a machine. Right. So, um, as you can already probably imagine, humanoid robots are maybe an interesting case here, because as machines, they call for adopting the design stance, uh, a stance where we explain behavior of a system with reference to how it has been designed to behave. So, when I push a brake pedal on a car, it stops. I explain its behavior uh, with reference to how it um, was designed to. Um, that was designed to stop when I push a brake pedal, not because it had a desire to stop at this particular moment, right? So um, as machines, humanoid robots call for a design stance, but yet they are um, perhaps evoking intentional stance as well because they look like humans and perhaps behave like humans. So the question is very similar. Can a behavior or appearance of a robot make us attribute to the robot mental states like we attribute to other humans. So um, I would like to highlight here that this question that we ask here in our lab 
as about nonverbal communication. So it's very interesting for me to speak here when uh, we're discussing about interpreting, about language, verbal communication. Actually, most of or all of our work is related to signals and social signals that are um, nonverbal. And the question is, can a robot um, exhibit a behavior that um, looks as if it had mental states? So can a robot trick us, in a sense, to believing that it has mental states just through nonverbal communication? So um, here I wanted to show you a little uh, video that illustrates of what sort of signals I mean when I talk about nonverbal communication. These are signals that we use all the time, every day with interactions um, and, and human human interactions that facilitate our communication. And uh, this video will illustrate a subset of such signals, a subset of, su of such uh, mechanisms that um, we investigate in our lab and that I find very interesting to address. So let me start. Things like mutual gaze that are very, very important for a social communication, um, gestures to communicate intention, uh, then gestures to confirm that I have understood your intentions, then some sort of um, coordination that allows joint action and cooperation. Here, a lot of signals are also um, employed. And then finally, if we succeed in communication, then we also signal to each other through emotions and facial expressions that we have synchronized emotion. So these sort of um, nonverbal signals are quite interesting for us. And the question is, how much human-like behavior affects actually adopting intentional stance towards robots? So I mentioned already uh, that there are several factors perhaps that affect adopt adopting the intentional stance. One of them certainly is human-like shape, as I said. Um, human-like behavior, and perhaps something that I will call interpersonal synchronization, which might actually be the key. I will not talk about human-like shape here because we are using in our uh, research only one robot, the iCAD robot that has been developed in our institute. But I will talk about human-like behavior and interpersonal synchronization. But before I get there, I wanted to point out that asking the question of whether people adopt intentional stance towards a robot or not is very much is, is, um, is very difficult to operationalize because it's a philosophical concept that we need to um, somehow translate into empirical uh, research. So in order to be able to ask the question of uh, whether people adopt intentional stance um, towards a robot and whether the robot's behavior, for example, modulates that intentional stance, we developed um, the so-called intentional stance test, not Turing test, but intentional stance test, um, not imitation game, but something very similar. Uh, the idea here is that we present to our participants um, 34 items. Each item is a set of uh, three pictures that like you see here. And um, below each of these uh, pictures, uh, these, these uh, series of three pictures, you um, have two descriptions. And one is uh, describing the scene with reference to intentional um, stance or mental states, like ICAP was trying to cheat, or ICAP was unbalanced, so a very mechanistic description. And now the question is, which of these descriptions participants will use if they will actually adopt intentional stance, they will probably be uh, very happy to switch this, uh, shift the slider that you see in the middle towards the mentalistic description. What we have found in our um, first experiment is that people um, do tend to adopt mainly mechanistic stance towards the robot because of course they see, they see the robot, but not always. Actually, uh, Sometimes they adopt intentional stance. And the most interesting fact is that people differ. So there are certain people who are more likely to adopt intentional stance towards the robot and some others 
that are more likely to adopt mechanical stamps. And one of the most fascinating things that we have seen recently is that actually this likelihood of adopting one or the other stance can be um, detected at the neural level uh, even before participants do their task. So we um, measured participants EEG before they were asked to do the task. And what we observed is that from their EEG activity, we could then determine whether a participant would be more likely to adopt one or the other stance towards a robot. So certain attitudes that people have, we can probably see in their brain activity even before they see the robot. So you asked about the poem. You were mentioning that, that you asked the question whether, whether people would be happy to have a robot as um, as a companion or robot as an interpreter, perhaps um, people differ in those answers. And we can perhaps see that difference already in their neural activity. So that's quite interesting um, result from our, from our lab. Now, I told you about factors that influence human-like behavior, uh, sorry, that influence intentional stance. And one of them is human-like behavior. So what we do in our lab, as we try to um, basically measure human-like behavior, like subtle eye movements, like you see here, and copy them then on the robot and see um, whether this kind of human-like behavior uh, that is very, as you see, I mean, it, here, of course, it's exaggerated, but when you see the robot from a distance and you don't know what to pay attention to, this is a very, very subtle uh, behavior, whether that would, um, modulate whether you adopt intentional stance towards the robot or not. And from, uh, so this is the, the, the general method, we first measure uh, human-like behavior um, or human behavior with the uh, eye tracker. You see the girl on the left, she's, she's wearing an eye tracker. And then we copy data from that eye tracker onto the robot. And then we see if participants would adopt intentional stance towards the robot more likely when it displays this kind of behavior as compared to very mechanical eye movements, like for example, just from one place to another. And our experiment has shown that when people just observe the robot with this kind of two behaviors, so human-like or mechanical, you actually um, don't see any modulation of the intentional stance. So it's not, not enough for participants to see this, um, uh, this as a, as a human-like behavior. It's maybe too subtle and maybe um, participants don't notice the difference. That's actually, actually something that we also realized. And it's not enough to change the attitude towards the robot. All right, so that was like a set, set of um, experiments on how to modulate the intentional stance. Um, and what we think is important is, as I said, the number of verbal behavior and some sort of um, attunement between the human and the robot. Here I wanted to uh, show you some examples of other type of nonverbal communicative signals that we also examine in our lab. Um, things like mutual gaze, um, where that we have shown that actually influences quite a lot um, engagement and joint attention. I will not go into details of of these data because this is uh, this have, uh, is quite complicated and we have done series of experiments on that. But the take home message here is a mutual gaze from, from uh, the robot um, modulates the way we engage attentionally with the robot, the way we feel engaged, both in terms of how, we, how participants respond uh, subjectively to our questionnaires, but also um, in eye tracking data and EEG data. So that's quite striking because at the end of the day, these are just two cameras, right? Uh, that are placed in the, in the robot's like eyes. And that is being treated as a social signal. Final um, experiment that's um, on, on gaze is um, an experiment on reciprocity. So uh, here what we did is we manipulated um, whether the robot would look at the same location as the participants. Participants wearing eye tracking glasses here and um, the robot either follows their gaze or not. So you'll see in a moment, she looks to the left, the robot also looks to the left. 
And um, here you see her saccades. So she looks to the left. In this case, robot looks to the left, but that's not always the case. Sometimes the robot doesn't follow their gaze. And um, what we have shown is that actually this kind of reciprocity influences also uh, engagement of participants. So to conclude from these um, gaze experiments, I uh, just wanted to summarize is that mutual gaze is actually processed as a social signals, signal and matters for engagement and behavior and decision-making. And also reciprocity, as we have seen, matters for engagement. So um, the general conclusions uh, from, from, from my talk um, are the following. Humans do sometimes adopt intentional stance towards robots. Um, this likelihood of ad adopting the intentional stance might vary across people. Um, what we think and see more or less in our lab is that interactive rather than just observational paradigms might actually enable adoption of intentional stance. And finally, uh, various nonverbal behaviors of the robots can actually be treated as social signals. So at the very last slide, I would like to thank my team here in, in Genoa, uh, thank the European Research Council for um, supporting this research, and thank you very much for your attention.